Hi, this is Dan Petrock. This is the solutions video for chapters 8, 9, and 10 for Math for Liberal Arts, Spring 2013. Uh, there's lots of problems on here similar to the previous exams, um, but a little tweak, a little deeper on some of them. Uh, and people did, that study I think did very well on this one. Uh, we had lots of A's and, and I was very happy to see that a lot of these concepts are really getting, uh, getting figured out this semester. So good job for those of you that really did well on this. Um, this first one is just trying to find out what's the doubling time, and we can use that rule of 70. Uh, if you take 70 divided by 7, it's, so it's approximately 10 years it will take to double. And then for the second part is what if the growth rate is only 1.7%, so you take 70 divided by 1.7, and it's 41.18 years. All right, on number two, uh, again, another doubling time, uh, 4%. Uh, per month, the question is how many months will it take? So, if you know if we're doing this compounding, uh, whatever per period, four percent per month, which is a lot, um, it's only take seventeen point five months to double the number of rats. And the next question is a little tougher. It's asking how long will it take the rats to become sixteen hundred? So you could actually use this formula that we had on our formula sheet: Q equals Q original. That's what you start with. The amount you start with one plus the rate to t. So we start with a hundred. We finish with sixteen hundred. And we have 4%, essentially how many times do we need to multiply by 1.04 to get to 1600? So, uh, you know, what did, divide both sides by 100, so you get 16. 16 equals 1.40t, and we know from the change of base formula, we can take the log of both sides, which says the log of 16, and then divide it by the log of 1.04, and there we are, about 71 months it's gonna take. Um, and I did accept, if you just went this one over here, the 17.5 months, we can think about it, if you double 100 four times, you'll get to 1600. So it goes 100 to 200, that's one. 200 to 400, that's two. 400 to 800, that's three. And 800 to 1600, there's four. So I would also accept that if you didn't want to, I guess, do that method. So and number three, 13% uh, per uh, year uh, will it be worth in three years. So you just, again, uh, one plus 0.13, there it is, 1.13 to the third power, so it's really multiplying times 1.13 three times. So the house in the future will be worth $494,625.09. On number four, uh, we're using the same formula again, 3% uh, per year, uh, five years, so it's 100 bucks, 1.03 to the fifth, there it is. 20 years, 1.03 to the 20th times 100. Uh, so there's the two answers there. Uh, number five, if the half-life is 2,000 years, what fraction is left in 2,000 years? Well, half. And how about in 10,000 years? So that's only being halved five times. So you could write it as one-half to the fifth, or one-half times one-half times one-half, which ends up being one thirty-second of what you actually started with, because uh, it's been halved five times. On six here, um, this is a little different. Instead of growth, it's decay, it's decreasing. So instead of one plus r, it's one minus r. So it's very similar to start with 50, uh, and then it decreases at 10% for two years, so 0.9 to the second ends up going down to $40.50. And then how long is it going to take to be worth $25? Very similar to the other one, 25 equals 50 times 0.9 to the T, divide by 50 to isolate that term, and then we use that change of base formula. So the log of the left side divided by the log of the base. So log of 0.5 divided by log of 0.9 is 6.578. So it's going to take you know six and a half years about to uh, to be halved in price. You know the the price of the memory is going to be halved in about seven years at that rate. In uh, number seven, um, pretty much just drive 59 miles an hour for 2.6 miles, and there you go. And again for that one, 5.3 times 59. And what's what's the relationship between these two variables? As as time increases, sort of the miles traveled, or the longer you drive, the farther you go. Number eight, uh, the domain is the x values. That's the size of the truck. So the size of the truck can be anywhere from, you know, zero or one. I don't I don't see a truck that is zero um, tons, but you know, probably one to twenty. And then the mileage, you know, I don't know what the best mileage is or the worst mileage is, but something feasible that I said from one to twenty miles per gallon for a truck. But, and then this graph says, you know, as the trucks get bigger, the uh, mileage goes down. So that's the relationship. As the weight increases, the mileage decreases. Um, and it's probably nonlinear like this, uh, but that does seem valid that the bigger the truck, the worse the mileage. Number eight, ooh, I'm sorry, number nine, 
uh, is a linear function. What does it show? It just shows um, the distance you travel uh, over time, and this is a linear function, which means they're at a constant rate of speed. So it's linear. If you find the rise over the run, 40 over 2 is 20. So they're going about 20 miles an hour, which is the slope of that line, 20 miles per hour. Is the rate of change. Uh, it's another descriptor. And that's only realistic if you stay constant. Um, obviously, at some point, you can't you have to stop and get gas or whatever. But for some point, you know, it, the real driving is probably not like this unless you're on cruise the whole time. Um, so I said it's only realistic if it's a constant speed. On 10, this graph is saying, you know, as the years increase, so does life expectancy. So that's pretty much the relationship as, as time is going along, people are living, living to be older. Um, and on 11, again, this is a horrible question, it says if two triangles are similar, they have the same size, but not the same shape. Well, obviously, if they're similar, they, they have the same shape, but not the same size. But if they do have the same sh same size, exactly the same size, uh, that means they have the same three sides are the same, they have the same shape too. So I accepted everything for that. Uh, 514 roof is this 5 or 14 rise over run, and there it is. Um, had some problems on 13, had to find the area of the inside part here. I accepted a couple different areas. This 12 is kind of in the middle, which means it's probably six feet to the edge. Um, so it's pi r squared, that's the area of this circle plus this circle, that's just one whole circle. I did accept if you put 12 in there, that was fine. And then the length times the width, 42 times 12, I also accepted 42 times 24 if you went, that is the diameter. Um, so there's a couple different answers, but I just stuck with 12 meaning this whole thing is 12, um, which seems ridiculous, this is really small, it's a skating rink, but putting that 12 there, is bad. They should have put it, you know, it's closer to show that it was halfway or is the radius or when it's stuck in the middle here it makes you think it's the diameter. But anyway, I accepted a bunch of answers for that. On 14, just find the volume, length times width times height. There it is, 650,988 meters cubed. And the last one, um, the only tricky part here was since you're trying to find the protective covering, uh, which is the surface area, and it doesn't have a top, it's a reservoir, so it's a big, essentially a big tank. So you just take uh, the length times the width, which is the area of the base right here, but we don't double it because we don't have a top. And then we do the, uh, the sides here, but we do double them because there's two sides. It gives you total surface area of 62,478 meters squared. Uh, there was 34 points, and like I said, lots of A's. And uh, so I hope this video helps you get ready for the next test or, or the final.